Hi, I wanna welcome you all to today's webinar. Uh, my name is Amanda McLean. I am the current chair of the Socioeconomic Inequality SIG and for ISBNPA. And we are excited to be um, hosting this webinar today um, with Naoki Kondo, Associate Professor at the University of Tokyo. Um, if you um, would please keep your cameras and microphones set to off. So currently should be set to off on Zoom. Just keep those um, set to off so that there's no interruption during um, Naoki's presentation. If you have a question, at the bottom of your Zoom screen, there is a Q&A feature. And if you um, have a question at any time during the webinar, you can write it in there. And then at the end of uh, Naoki's presentation, we will address those questions. Um, I will uh, turn it over to uh, Naoki Kondo now. All right. Hello. Hi, all. Uh, this is Naoki Kondo. Thanks for joining uh, in this webinar. I'm a social epidemiologist and I have devoted to the studies to understand social determinants of health and how to control health inequality in the community settings. Or I, I change this, uh, start my presentation with my slides. Let's share. All right. I hope you see my slides right now. Is that good? It is. You can see. Okay. Yes, we can see them. Okay. Yep. Okay, so the my the title of my talk today is Achieving Health Equity via Community Organizing to Real World Intervention Studies in Japan. Go to the next slide. Now, you, you may need to press your screen, your, your yeah. slide screen, oh, yeah, and then yeah. change. It's, now it should change. It's not changed. Okay. Yeah, there are the contents of my talk today. Uh, after introducing some of the key concepts, I would like to introduce two cases of health promoting activities in the communities in Japan. The first one is about the nationwide quasi experimental study aiming to prevent, prevent socially inactive status of older adults. And second one is about the co-creation approach by the city of Adachi in Tokyo, aiming to reduce health inequality in diabetes and other chronic diseases. Okay, let's get started. So today's talk is about uh, how to control health inequality by addressing the issues in social determinants of health. To do so, the WHO recommends three things. First, improve daily living conditions, that is targeting social environment rather than individual behavior, such as exercise, diet, etc. Because as this rainbow chart, rainbow colored chart shows, individual health and health behaviors are largely determined by social context of the places people are living in. If some people don't have enough resources to take actions by themselves, simple high risk strategy, such as health campaign that provides a message like do more exercise, can be the one uh, blaming the victims of in inequitable resources distributions of the society. Therefore, approaching to the social determinants of health, in addition to provide those messages, is essential. Second one, uh, strengths and governance, to tackle the inequitable resource distribution. This is important because a health professional, like me, I'm a physician, cannot modify most of the social determinants of health. As you see in the figure, community networks, education, work environment, and housing, uh, I cannot address these things. So that is the same for the other professionals in the other sectors. Each professional and organization is not capable enough to make a big change in a society. 
Hence, we need to make good partnerships with multiple sectors that can manage those factors. Third, health equity assessment. Measuring and understanding the problem and assessing the impact of action using data. This is important to take like PDCA, plan, do, check and act process together with multiple stakeholders. So the community organizing, the key word of my talk today, closely links to the second recommendation, strengthening governance. So what is the community organizing? In public health, community organizing is defined as the process by which community groups are helped to identify common problems or goals, mobilize the resources and to develop and implement strategies to reach goals they have set collectively. Community organizing is action to empower community, which is a central strategy in health promotion to achieve health equity. Well, these are the knowledge on the textbook, the, the uh, definition of uh, community organizing the theory and its definition and sounds nice but the question is does it work in the real world to the best of my knowledge there are very few intervention studies that evaluated the effectiveness of community organizing actions then we studied this the lead author was maho haseda a doctoral student at my laboratory when he we conducted this study I think one potential reason why such study is rare, the intervention study, is that community organizing needs to involve the community as a whole. Every unit of intervention is a community, not individual. That is big. Then such, such study require a huge scale cluster trial that allocate multiple communities into two groups, intervention group and control group, and follow up them many residents in uh, those communities for a long time. It's tough. But luckily, we had the opportunity to use a field that has large scale data. We are the member of the Japan Gerontological Evaluation Study. We call it JGIS. JGIS is one of the largest repeated longitudinal study in Japan, following up 100,000 of uh, all the adults residing in more than 30 municipalities. In JGIS, we conduct mail-in surveys for those same individuals every three years, and the survey data is linked to the National Long-Term Care Insurance Database and death certification data. And the primary, primary motivation of municipalities that participate in JGIS is that they want to use the results of JG's survey to make the action plan of long-term care and community-based integrated care system. The central government of Japan requires all municipalities to make the action plan and reform it every three years. Then more than 30 municipalities joined in JG's so far. By the way, community-based integrated care system this is the Japan's current strategy to achieve healthy longevity. Many older adults usually require multiple types of cares, not only medical care, but other cares as well, including long-term care, social care, and the community care that provides the opportunities to maintain their participation in the community. Then those services should be provided in an integrated manner. Now, you may notice that this concept, community-based integrated care, is similar to the concept of community organizing, isn't it? Yeah. So this is the assessment schedule of our study. We used JGIS survey in 2013 as the baseline, then started our interventions to municipality staff members for the half of half of participating municipalities. Then we used the 2000, 2016 survey to evaluate the effectiveness of our intervention. Besides, we conducted another annual survey for municipality staff members in the health sector, asking their policy-making skills 
and the personal networks with multiple sectors. So this is a hypothesis of our study. The basic concept was from the community coalition action, action theory. That is a practical model for community empowerment. According to the model, an agency, in this case, uh, that was us, the group of researchers in public health, supports the men members of allied organizations in the community. Then their skills for policy making, leadership, assessments, and the building partnership may develop. And the collaborative synergy gains, resulting in more community capacity and in turn, the healthy behavior and its equity among local residents can be achieved. The intervention is like this. Basically, for all municipalities, we provided the data tools for community diagnosis. We call that. That was the online interactive tools with which municipality workers can understand the geographical and social distributions of health risks and resources within, within and between municipalities. For the municipalities in the intervention group, we additionally provided the supports on how to utilize the data tools for community organizing. For example, we assisted them in organizing intersectoral meetings with other sectors in the city and utilizing the health maps with local people's groups like this, these pictures. This approach succeeded in some municipalities in the intervention group. For example, in Matsubara city, uh, public health nurses shared the visualized uh, health data in the community meetings with local residents. Then people surprised because they understood their serious conditions like uh, here or here, uh, there are many people living alone who have difficulty in shopping. I mean, the data triggered residents' action and they launched new activity called Oyorimase Salon. Oyorimase means in local language, like just drop by. Oyorimase is a, a lunchtime social gathering activities for those living alone. Interestingly, this activity made some spillover effects. That village uh, previously uh, had a mobile shop coming from the next city, but the shop gave up uh, coming here, coming there, because no, one no more customers uh, they, they, the shop had due to declining population in Matsura city. However, after Oyorimatsu Salon started, the participants requested the shop to come back but this time when the salon opened because there are many people at the same place in the salon day so now mobile shop is back and people enjoy shopping and the shop owner is happy as well so this is the results because the allocation of municipalities was not at random we balanced the baseline characteristics of municipalities using the inverse probability of a treatment weight technique. We calculated the weights with the data on uh, baseline municipality characteristics compared to control, yes. And compared to control groups, men residing in the intervention municipalities started participating in the local activities more and also increased the number of participating local groups so it was effective among men. Unfortunately, we did not find any uh, those differences between the groups among women. So yeah, that was effective for men. When we stratified the analysis by income, we found no difference in the effects across income levels, but we found a good relative increase in group participation among men with low incomes compared to those with high incomes, but that was not statistically significant. Although no differences by income levels, this is good news that the community organizing intervention can contribute to socially 
vulnerable people as well. In summary, uh, this is a limitation. Uh, there is a limitation to consider that is a potential residual confounding because this is not a randomized trial. But uh, research, we can say that research has support for municipality staff members on data-driven community organizing activities may increase uh, group participations of older men, regardless of their income levels. Our approach has been adopted by the National Institute of Public Health in Japan in their training workshops for the members of prefectural aging departments on how to support municipalities for healthy aging. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Uh, yes, the community organizing to tackle inequality in non-communicable disease at Adachi City in Tokyo. Adachi locates on the north end of Tokyo metropolitan area. When the city government considered to reform their health promotion strategy, they noticed multiple problems. For example, two year shorter time life expectancy than Tokyo average and high diabetes prevalence and so on. Hi, Naoki, I wanted to, yes. I'm sorry to interrupt, this is Amanda. Right. I just wanted to yeah. remind all of our attendees to make mm -hmm. sure that you mute your microphones. Mute? Yeah, not you, Naoki, the, but our attendees. Just wanted to oh, remind okay, you okay, all okay. to keep your, oh, yeah. keep your microphones muted so that we can better hear um, our, our speaker. Okay. Is that good right now? Can I yeah, continue? go ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt. Okay, Just wanted no to problem. remind no remind yeah. everyone. Good. Yeah, the health sector of a Dutch government, uh, the workers also seriously thought that the insufficient number of participants in the health education activities they provided, such as exercise class for diabetes patients. Then the Dutch city changed their primary approach from high-risk strategy to population strategy. They focused on community environment rather than individual behavior and set the new goal as creating communities where people can be healthy by just living there. To do so, they prioritized, they prioritized diabetes as the target of intervention and vegetable intake as its targeted behavior. Thus, the new basic policy of Adachi, Adachi was to create a good vegetable eating environment by designing the community so that any person naturally or non-consciously increased vegetable intake. They launched the new program called Vegetable Life, meaning like eat vegetables in daily life, and started to recruit partner restaurants. The partner restaurants developed certified vegetable rich meals in their menu for, uh, for which city government set its standard. That is a meal with two, 120 gram or more vegetable per serving, except potato. They started to recruit around 2013 and now it is more than 800. That is 12% of all restaurants in Adachi. The government has also created nationwide partnerships with local enterprises, including supermarkets and 7-Eleven, that is convenience to a franchise chain. They also reached local banks and life insurance companies and trained 550 sales personnel as health promotion volunteers. The government also reformed diet education at schools, setting the new goal as by graduation, all Adachi junior high school kids can cook steamed rice, miso soup, and fried egg. I like this very concrete goal. Yeah. So these citywide actions are called kyoso in Japanese. Uh, it means co-creation. The current Adachi city basic plan explains that in the traditional government or governing approach, city government orders actions to local organizations. But right now, Adachi government seek more partnered actions based on the citywide co-creation platform in which 
various, stake, various stakeholders make horizontal partnerships. This is close to the governance, which is the second recommendation by WHO, as I, as I introduced earlier. So far, the, the health status of other reg, residents improved better than other cities nearby. According to the Jay Shine study, a longitudinal study of young adults and their children residing in four municipalities in the, in the greater Tokyo area, including Adachi. These activities are introduced in the latest OECD reviews of Jap uh, public health in Japan, and uh, Adachi was awarded for its activities by the Ministry of Health in Japan. Okay, now I want to introduce the study results uh, of ours evaluating one of those activities in Adachi, which was published from the journal of this academic society, your society. The whole study was led by Wataru Nagatomo, that was a former master course student at the time, and now he is working as a data strategist at Adachi City. Yeah, uh, in June 2016, other city conducted a campaign with 26 vegetable life partner restaurants. In the campaign, the restaurant offered 50 yen cashback or discount for the customers who ordered vegetable rich meals. 15, 50 yen is equivalent to, the, to nearly 50 cent in US dollar. It's very tiny, but that is important, the tiniest things. The data stems from, uh, no, no. Sorry, the idea stems from the bounded rationality, a theory in behavior science. That is, people people tend to refer, uh, oh sorry, the people tend to prefer avoiding losses to acquiring equivalent gains, which is called loss aversion bias. Given that, even though the person values extra vegetables on the vegetable rich meal, less than 50 yen, they may select it. The bias could be stronger if the offer is available in a limited period, just uh, a week in this uh, intervention. So this is another non-randomized trial, randomized trial, non-randomized trial, cluster pre and post comparisons. The campaign, campaign week followed non-campaign week and we compared the customer behaviors between the two periods. We set three research questions. Did vegetable rich menu orders increase? Did restaurant sales increase? And did customers with a low socioeconomic status order more vegetable rich menus? So the third research question, uh, I mean, the potential more impacts for socially vulnerable people may happen given the neuroendocrine function against chronic stress. That is, chronic stress impedes rational choices. In other words, stress strengthens the response from bounded rationality. For socially stressed out people may purchase more basic rich meals in the campaign period. So the various types of restaurants participated in the campaign, such as Chinese, Italian, Japanese, and Izakaya pubs. So these are the results. Even adjusting for multiple covariates, prevalence of ordering vegetable rich meals during the campaign period was by 1.5 times higher than non-campaign period. The sales were 1.77 times as high as non-campaign period, even subtracting the amount of 50 yen cashbacks from the sales gain. The results by social economic status was not clear, unfortunately. This is a result by financial status because it was difficult to ask annual income to the people who enjoyed meals. We asked the average cost paid when eating out for lunch. However, um, the, the gain of vegetable rich meal orders in campaign period was the highest among the persons who paid for lunch the least. But we do not know uh, why those foods 
uh, financial status was in the middle level, reduced the register rich mail orders. So the result was not so clear. Similarly, the trends by educational attainment was not clear. As for job status, non-regular workers increased vegetable rich meal orders the most. But again, we did not observe the clear impact gap in proportion to the levels of social vulnerability. In summary, uh, overall, the campaign was successful, successful at this low value incentive increased targeted health behavior. We also have good news. The participating restaurants increased daily sales, which could encourage participation to the campaign next time. The bad news is that the inequality, inequality narrowing effect was not as clear as we expected. This offers important implication that any health promoting action, even if it may be effective in theory, need continuous monitoring of its impacts on overall health and health equity. The conclusions to create equitable healthy societies, it is important to go upstream in the social determinants of health. Targeting social and environmental determinants of health is important. Community organizing is a key action to achieve an equitable and healthy society, and it is essential to reach and empower socially vulnerable population. It is valuable to build uh, good governance in the community or make effective partnerships beyond health sector, like what a Dutch government have done in its co-creation approach. Nonetheless, another critical thing to uh, is to make continuous assessment of actions. As I introduced in the JG study, data are strong tools to partner the actions. Data-oriented evaluation is also important as the interventions. Mm, um, data-oriented evaluation is also important as the interventions are not always effective in targeted subpopulations and reducing health inequalities. The two studies I introduced today were not the best in terms of scientific causal inference because they were not randomized controlled trials. Usually, randomized controlled trials require many assumptions and conditions in order to maintain its internal validity. However, these conditions reduce the possibility of application into the policy in the real world. On the other hand, the evidence-making approach I showed today, that is building continuous partnerships with the primary players in the community, such as municipality governments, and creating evidence together through the partnered actions is valuable in the sense that it can contribute to the real world policy making processes. Well, thank you for listening. Uh, this is just for your information. We published the monograph featuring uh, JGs together with WHO. The monograph covers the, show, the sort of a secret of making continuous partnerships with local and central governments. You can download from the WHO website for free. So please uh, take a look if interested. Thank you very much. So now I uh, stop my slides. Thank okay? you so much, Naoki. Okay. I wanted to open it up if anyone has questions to please submit their questions on the Q&A um, uh, feature at the bottom of your uh, Zoom window. There's a little Q&A that you can click on and you can um, ask questions and we will um, answer those questions. Um, while you're formulating uh, those questions, I'll go ahead and start. Um, can you tell us a little bit about why you feel the uh, JGIS intervention was effective only in men and not women? Yeah, thank you for asking that. It's an uh, important uh, question. Yeah, basically, it's, uh, so those participant municipality already have many uh, uh, interventions in the community, 
but uh, it's like the social gathering opportunities. But women uh, usually like those kind of you know, interventions, the opportunity for just chatting uh, with other people. But the problem is for men, they don't like that kind of things usually. So I think based on the collaboration with us, maybe the, the municipality staff members in the intervention group, they start uh, thinking about how to reach to men who are the difficult sub uh, populations for that kind of intervention. So that was one of the reasons why this is effective for men, I think. <laughs> Do you, is there any just sort of following up? Is there anything that you uh, that you might uh, do differently um, to see an effect in women, perhaps? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I I personally don't have any you know concrete ideas by myself, but it's important to you know have a continuous uh, you know opportunity to discuss with local and the municipality no. staff members to uh, you know discuss about that so this is important stuff of the community organizing if we have a partnership we can discuss in a continuous way yeah then the many new ideas is coming out All right we do have a, a question also about the judges uh study um Kota asked, in the case one study, did you assess any health outcomes such as quality of life? Yeah, thank you very much for asking. So we, we did evaluate many health outcomes, including mortality, the onset of long-term care needs, and other you know, various you know, health behaviors, and the onset of uh, disease. Yeah. So far, we found the declining mortality in the intervention group among men, the, the, like the same with the result I showed today. Yeah, we didn't publish it yet, so I, I couldn't see the results yet, mm. but it can reduce mortality as well. Okay, other questions? So I am, um, just since we're on the case first case study, um, I wanted to, I was also curious um, if you could tell us a little bit about the kind of formative research that your group did to inform uh, development of that intervention, sort of what that process looked like, what happened, who was involved. Okay, yeah. The JGS uh, consists of like more than uh, I don't know the exact number, but 30 or 40 or 50 researchers uh, nationwide, wide. and uh, every you know month we have a research meetings together. Yeah, and uh, one or two times in a year we invite all the participating municipality uh, staff members and discuss together about what the judges should do in the future, mm. and. Besides that, the you know the some researchers who are skilled in uh, coaching or supporting those you know actual practices, they go to the municipality offices, um, for example, like three times a year or something, and uh, sub provides the support to make community organizing actions. Then uh, you know create any many interventions. But just the, what the we researchers is doing is to uh, make a mild support, not like insisting the uh, municipality staff members to do something. Mm. So the ownership of the you know, intervention is uh, owned by, of course, the municipality staff members. Mm. We are just the supporters. Yeah, and it seems like each uh, municipality was slightly different in whatever approach that they took. Yeah, it's not slightly, but very different by the mm -hmm. unit, uh, municipality sizes and where they locate in rural area, urban area. So there are huge variations. That's why the central government of Japan sets a new strategy, community-based uh, integrated care. They ask them to align the strategy on the, the characteristics of the community. 
Yeah, yeah. And are those things that your group is and and those municipalities are documenting in terms of um, the specifics of those interventions and how some might what aspects of those changes may have been more or less effective? Sort of like yeah. process evaluation aspects. Yes, uh, we have published several like sort of guidelines or like. Uh, yeah, the guidelines, but that only covers very basic concepts of how to make good partnerships with other sectors or like that. And also we provided some case studies or successful cases and sometimes it's like a, you know, unsuccessful cases. And that is just a reference for the you know, participating, participating municipalities. They may take that cases for their actions, but they may not. Yeah, it depends. Right. Yeah. Okay. There was a follow-up question regarding um, the mortality decline, and um, one of the participants wanted to know if uh, the mortality decline uh, was this, was directly associated with participation in the community activity. Right. That is actually the future agenda for our research. So the mechanism of those, you know, the impacts. Yeah, one of the mechanisms, yeah, we also uh, evaluated the improvement in the policy making skills among uh, community health workers. And we found the increasing number of um, partnerships with other sectors among the, the health, public health nurses in intervention groups compared to the control. Yeah. So maybe that, that supports that our intervention is successful in, you know, improving their uh, partnerships or social capital in their activities. And also the, yeah, the number, they also increase the number of contacts or conversations with non-health sectors outside the municipalities. That is interesting. Yeah, so they expanded their, you know, partnerships. Yeah. That's really interesting. Um, another question also related to um, your case study one, was there any change in satisfaction level of municipality, municipality the staff? Yeah, the staff oh, there. Staff members. Oh yes, we measured that in the questionnaire. So I'm sorry, I didn't, I, I don't, uh, remember the result, but I will try to check. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That's all right. Um, so another question that just popped up, did you explore the reasons um, for unsuccess of the clusters? I'm not sure. I assume that uh, this is in reference to case study one. Um, how can that be improved based on your understanding in this study? You mean or maybe, answer. maybe there were, I don't know if, if the person who asked that can uh, clarify if you're referring to case yeah. study one, um, the judges, uh, intervention or Adachi case study two. I don't know. You may, Naoki, you may be able okay, to answer yeah, that. Un unsuccessful cluster in the JJ study is women. Case one, yeah. Case one, <laughs> yeah. Women. For case two, that is, you know, like uh, middle income people um, and others. Yeah. So they want to. They want to know, know if you're. Case, case one? If you, yes, case study one. Did you explore the reasons for um, those clusters that were unsuccessful and how can that be improved based on your um understanding of the study sorry about oh, that no no no. yeah for, for for women so i i explained already yeah so they are so there are they are there are already many intervention to the women effective in women so far so it's like a ceiling effects for those who are richer people mm, so we don't we didn't know we didn't also no 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 we saw, yeah, I don't know what is the unsuccessful cluster, remaining clusters in this case one. Um, I, 
besides women, I'm not, sh I'm not sure. Did the um, person who asked that have any, have a specific um, comparison of unsuccessful clusters? I know women were a piece of that. We kind of talked about it. Yeah. Maybe uh, they finished. haven't, they haven't answered. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> If you have more to, to sort of clarify about that question, um, that would help us out. Um, are there other, just sort of, since we're still talking about that case study one, are there other um, uh, improvements that you'd like to, to make um, in terms of reaching different uh, segments of the population that you and your group have in mind? Mm. Uh, we haven't uh, tested other, you know, subpopulations yeah, yet. Yeah, but uh, we will do. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and uh, the, the related to the questions, uh, previous questions. I think it's really important to seek for the mechanisms of the differential impacts on subpopulations. Mm. But I think. It's sometimes very difficult, mm. but I think uh, then it's very important to monitor the impacts, not only the overall impacts, but also the impact by subpopulations. Uh, that is important to, in, in, in the sense we need to you know, shrink the health inequality. Yeah. Usually th that kind of ac activity is not well done in Japanese many you know, local communities and central government, even and central government. Yeah, so the monitoring subpopulation is very important, I think. Yeah, yeah, we, um, the socioeconomic inequality SIG um, published um, or, or uh, drafted sort of recommendations for how to think about differences in effects mm. by socioeconomic status. We did that about a year and a half ago, and I believe it's right. posted on the ISBN PA website in our section. Right. But I would agree right. that those are things that we need to be um, right. looking at more closely in terms of, is this intervention increasing inequalities instead of decreasing them? Um, so can you tell us a little bit more about how the government went about building those community relationships in the Adachi study? Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, so the, as far as I heard from the, uh, the, the you know, government members, the important, they initially had some successful uh, experiences of you know, uh, making the good environment to prevent crime actually. Yeah, so they have a successful, you know, experience about like cleaning up the roads and the wiping out the trashes or those things. And uh, those things decreased the, you know, the crime, the stealing bicycles or those things a lot. And then they noticed that the, the partnerships to make the community better is quite effective. Then they expanded that the concept into the, the municipality-wide actions, including health, you know, the uh, promotion. Yeah. So the, the I think the central the governmental office uh, started a new you know, overall strategy to uh, improve the whole city agenda um, into go more. Uh, environment change under the the, the partner, wide range partnerships. Mm. So the, the uh, it's led by the you know the head of the municipal city. So the, those you know structuring those key concepts is done by the you know top the chief of the city. But it's and they the, she uh, said I don't know. The incentivize, I don't know, the you know, whole city activities to the, each department, and then they started to do their own things by themselves. Mm. 
sounds so like there was investment the yeah. from the top people. Yeah, from the top, the, the concept comes from the top, but that originally from the, 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 the activities in the local settings. But after that, the top set the, the central agenda, then mm -hmm. they make the structure of the whole city government effective in making a good partnership. Mm -hmm. That is effective, and yeah, to support the, the each actions in each department. Right. Yeah. Uh, we have a couple more questions about case study one, but before we move back to that, I wanted since we're on the Adachi case two, um, so it looked like this low value incentive um, intervention, mm -hmm. like there was a little bit of an effect, but it might not last that long. What yeah. do you think might make that intervention effective for a longer time, a more sustainable uh, change. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you for asking that. Yeah, as I introduced the those you know the incentive approach don't last long. So, but this is just one um, campaign, and uh, it's very important to make multiple that kind of campaigns together with the other sectors that have many ideas, similar and very different ideas. Yeah. By making the continuous partnerships with other sectors, they can create many ideas, like many companies are doing. Yeah, so the, I suggest that is the activities of like social marketing. Yeah, single uh, intervention doesn't work long. So that we may create multiple those actions together with under the partnerships. That is an important point. Then the community organizing is important. And um, with that uh, case two intervention, one of our participants asked if those menu those menu incentives are going to be continuously offered or are being continuously offered beyond the study. Oh, no, only in the campaign period. But as far as I heard, the Adachi City uh, have the campaign annually in June. And uh, recently they start expanding the campaign to the retail store in addition to restaurants. Mm. So in the retail store, they offer like a small package for the vegetables. It is easy to buy by like a living alone person and incentivize it with a low value um, cashback. So they change a little bit about those strategy. Okay. okay. Um, we had a clarification, the earlier question that um, about the different uh, levels of success depending on the clusters um, and the, the, the individual who asked the question clarified um, of the 16 intervention clusters, so those 16 municipalities, did you find the intervention worked at the same level? And if not, what were the reasons for, or your suspected reasons for less effectiveness in some of the clusters. Okay. Oh, now I understand that. Yeah. Even the, <clears throat> sorry, even in the intervention group, yeah, some municipality was so successful and others are not. Yeah. And we treated the analysis like intent to treat. Yeah. So the result shows the overall effect. Mm. And, uh, and we, actually didn't know why it's successful in some you know municipalities other than not but one thing in our sensitivity analysis showed was the that the amount of contact with JGS group members that was significantly associated with the performances of the community actions so uh, yeah it is statistically significant so i think the supporting or coaching the community organizing inter actions. That is one key, you know, the intervention to make the partnership effective. 
okay. otherwise i don't i don't know that of course can be affected by the community context timings of the interventions and skills of the you know the supporters researchers i mean mm. but right. that depends mm. and maybe but even we, the type of intervention that they chose to that's implement. right that's right mm -hmm. we we uh, tried to make a standardized guideline to how to support for them but only the standardized guideline is just a, you know the, the concept it's not very concrete mm. we rather keep the you know the capacity of uh, arranging it by each researcher which is very important that the intervention can be real world uh, if and the you know the ap applicable to the, in the real world mm. right yeah uh other questions from our attendees do you how do you think your this approach would work in other settings and other countries both um you know develop you know industrialized countries as well as low and middle income countries yeah oh thank you very much yeah the challenge is uh the, the challenge is if this kind of approach is effective in like low income, low and middle income countries and resource limiting limited settings. But I believe that as the, that that can be effective because the making partnerships that doesn't cost a lot. And in theory, uh, the community organizing, as I said, it's the key uh, activity to empower community that is the also the key concept in the health promotion and the primary health care approach as WHO continuously uh, recommended to even for the low and the middle income countries yeah so empowering people by connecting the organizations in the community that is universal can be universally applicable but of course it's it is important to evaluate it mm. yeah and that would look different depending on the the country context as sure, well sure and each country may have their own way to make it more effective in given the con context of each areas mm. Mm -hmm. other questions from our attendees or maybe you have uh Naoki, you have some other things yep. that you didn't have time to talk about in the presentation that you would like to um, expound upon here. I don't know, but uh, I'm curious if the the participants is you know happy with my talk, like they agree <laughs> with my, my opinions. Feedback <laughs> from the attendees. <laughs> Maybe, maybe I, if you don't mind, I, I, I may pose the question because there's one possibility in Portugal now uh, that um, the government will s create some sort of financial incentive to active uh, lifestyles. And okay. I'm saying via the tax system, like a sugar tax, but instead oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. of being uh, inhibiting sugar tax consumption or sugar right, consumption right. to promote it do you have any experience or knowledge about this being tested or yeah, the financial incentive and disincentive to the unhealthy behavior like sugar sweetened tax and tobacco tax that is effective and as far as i know that is effective in reducing the uh, the social economic inequality in choosing the 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 options in, for mm -hmm. example like a uh, smoking tobacco but yeah it's uh, still depends on the context and that's in japan the increase in the tobacco tax that actually reduced the smoking prevalence among less educated people but it doesn't didn't change the behavior of uh, heavy smokers yeah they are like also likely to be social vulnerable yeah, yeah. But, but if if i can uh, uh, the the thing here is that it's not a, sh a sugar tax is for 
uh, an incentive if you start uh, some sort of active uh, lifestyle. So, for example, you uh, you go to a gym and you start going to a yeah. gym, and then you you have uh, an incentive for doing that. Mm -hmm. And I'm afraid that this may provide or might promote more social inequalities because only the ones right, that are healthy, right. wealthier. Yeah. 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 No, no one know about the potential, you know, okay. increase or decrease of health inequality. So that's why I uh, suggest monitoring it in, mm -hmm. continu in a continuous way. Yeah. Okay. And the inequality issue is really sensitive. Sensitive. So it's also it's much more important to mo to invest to the monitoring rather than the activity to achieve overall health impacts. Thank you. I think that, that that seems like a fair concern given how that incentive would be set up in Portugal, definitely. Um, yeah. And especially if um, lower income, um, lower SES individuals and households already have, you know, you showed that slide earlier in the presentation about just the impact of stress and we know that stress is tightly linked with um, experiences of poverty and how that can affect just daily decisions that one is making so um, you know exercise is not going to necessarily be a top priority um, even when we're thinking about an incentive system because that sort of um, the ability to to sort of make those make those decisions or choices isn't really there, so that's a fair concern. Yeah, yeah I think the, the just achieving the health equity by single intervention is not uh, possible. Yeah, so we need a series of interventions with many ideas. Yeah, but no one knows the overall impact of those series of interventions. That's why the monitoring the health inequality is. Uh, you know, urgent and very important issues in public health actions toward health equity. It's almost the time to. Yeah, <laughs> any last burning questions from our attendees? Well, just a reminder that um, this recording of the webinar will be posted um, on YouTube. Um, in another day or two. Um, and so we'll, we'll share that when that's posted. But we thank you all for uh, participating, taking time out of your day. And um, hopefully you'll share uh, this webinar with uh, others that were unable to attend. Thank you very thank much. You so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Naoki.